So 10 years ago today was the first time I uploaded a video onto YouTube. <laughs> and while I haven't exactly done a whole lot with my channel in the past year or two or three, three or four or five, uh, I still uh, kind of think it's interesting to just look back and see how much has changed since I have started on YouTube. It's just so weird to look back at everything that's happened, and for those of you that have been with me for this entire time who've been subscribed, I'm sure there are a couple of you out there, uh, from going from, you know, zero to over a hundred thousand now, which by the way, I do have a hundred thousand subscriber video. I just have not gotten around to editing it because I am a weird combination of busy and lazy, which I am trying to amend. Uh, but but I digress. Uh, I, I thought I'd uh, share a little bit about where I was back then and how I got to where I am now and how much my life personally has changed in those 10 years. So let's go back to the year 2007. I was just a high school senior, uh, recently injured uh, playing rugby. I had uh, basically broken my back, herniated a disc, and like, basically, I, I was in immense pain. Like, I'm talking, uh, I needed a cane to walk uh, in order to keep like some of the pressure off my spine, and that was when I could walk. Every time I sneezed, I'd get these like, horrible seizing pains going all the way down my back into my legs. I would often lose control of my legs and fall over. And I uh, did that while going up some stairs one time. And oh boy, let me tell you, that wasn't fun. And due to the uh, pain and stuff that I was uh, dealing with there, I had to quit my first job, which granted was not a very fun job. I don't think anybody's first job is great, but mine particularly I wasn't too fond of. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, while losing that job isn't exactly the end of the world to me, it still really hurt my sense of self-worth. And I was in this position where I couldn't go to my senior prom. I couldn't do a lot of things that I wanted to do. I couldn't get on the stage and act, which was probably one of my favorite things to do in high school. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, 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 very depressed uh, all of this together, you know, losing my job, it really diminished my sense of self-worth. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, is this what life is going to be like from this point forward? Am I always going to be in pain? Will this ever end? What will I be like, you know, not even 10 years from now, but like five years from now? Like, where will I be? I was lost and confused and uh, incredibly depressed. So I'd stay up at night and, you know, browse the internet and eventually uh, went on to YouTube and I discovered Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series. I think I started at like episode 7 and uh, I started laughing my ass off because I think it was up to like episode 10 or something at the time. I can't really remember. Uh, but I, I watched through all of the episodes he had had at that point and I fell in love with it. And uh, after that, I discovered uh, uh, Masako and his buddy Vegeta 3986's uh, Naruto, the abridged series. And I'm like, holy crap, there are more of these out there. And I started just looking up, you know, anime that I knew that maybe had a abridged parody to them. I found Berserk. Uh, and since I didn't know many anime at the time, that was about it. <laughs> so... I'm like, holy crap, this is awesome, and I'm sitting there, I have a microphone, well, not really a microphone, I have this, like, Logitech headset at the time, which was, you know, for its time, a decent mic quality, it's not this, but it was good enough, and I had a, uh, a video editing software, I think it was, like, Pinnacle Studios, it was something by the Avid Group, and I had, uh, Two two anime collections on DVD. I had Berserk, which HBI2K had already done, and uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. I had a good majority of that DVD set because it hadn't quite finished releasing. So I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a shot. So I ripped the DVD, and that night I stayed up and basically just one shot an entire episode. No script writing, no nothing, just improving all the way through. And oh boy, does that show if you go back and look at it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did that. I uploaded it and 
I just sat back and not realizing exactly what I had set out on, I had created something and posted it on the internet and people started watching it and much to my surprise, they liked it. I mean, my jokes were hit or miss. And if you ask me now, I'd say 99.99999% of them were miss. But apparently people really liked it. And that, for the first time in, God, probably three or four weeks, made me smile. It made me... It made me hopeful that there was more to what I was doing. Like, you know, m- more to what I could do. And uh, I want to thank those of you out there who were there in the beginning. And who are still here now. And who have joined me along the way. It's it's meant a lot to me. It really pulled me out of a dark place. But more than that... Uh, it gave me a sense of direction for a while. I've always loved entertaining, and this has given me an outlet to do that, to, you know, talk to people. But moving on from there, I uh, eventually got in contact with uh, Masako and Vegeta, who were doing the Naruto Abridged, and uh, surprising to me, like, like, this was way back when, uh, you know, uh, in the early days where... I, I probably had like maybe a hundred subscribers or something at the time, and they were sitting up there. They were like behemoths. They had nearly ten thousand subscribers, and to me that was god tier. Like holy crap! And bear in mind, back then on YouTube, I think the most amount of subscribers anybody had was Smosh, and they were like close to a million back then. Like YouTube had not exploded yet, but yeah. Uh, so I met them, and they were really nice dudes, and I made quick friends with them. Uh, I eventually, you know, got... Like, eventually this little quote-unquote abridged community started, like, kind of coming together and everybody started meeting each other and uh, eventually other people started their own projects like Taka and his buddy Cheeseman did a G Gundam abridged. Uh, Kaiser came in with Lupin the Third abridged. Everybody just started meeting each other, and eventually uh, we formed Team Four Star. Because uh, that was a project that Kaiser had always wanted to do. Uh, He always wanted to do Dragon Ball. And in the meanwhile, Masako, Vegeta, uh, our friend Rissa, and myself had done, uh, like, the Dragon Ball movies. Because we didn't want to tackle the whole series, because that seemed like a daunting task. And I'll tell you eight years into a project working on the series, it's a daunting task. <laughs> so we were like doing, uh, we, we had done World's Strongest and we had done The Dead Zone and Kaiser approached me, Kaiser and Taka approached me asking about like, hey, do you think we could do the series? And I thought, you know what, with Kaiser's editing uh, and, you know, the writing between the three of us, I thought we could really handle it and the cast that we had and, uh, that's when that took off. This was also around the same time where I met Erica, my now wife. And uh, I was never really good with uh, girls. Like, I, I'd, I'd been on dates before, but none of them ever turned into any real relationships, you know? For what... It, like, for what... YouTube, like, all this YouTube stuff had done, it had given me a lot of confidence in myself, and it just allowed me to feel better about taking some risks, and that risk eventually turned into a marriage when I uh, was just kind of, like, laying down, flirting with her. I made her laugh, and I stole a kiss. And that started a whole different adventure in my life, one that I'm not going to go completely into, but uh, just to kind of tie everything into this. So yeah, I'm going into my sophomore year of college and uh, now working on the Team Four Star project. It's 
it changed a, it changed a lot of things for me, but mostly the fact that holy crap did that project just blow up in popularity. Like at, at the time, my personal channel had I think twenty thousand subscribers, maybe twenty five. I can't really remember. And I I felt like you know big man on campus because I was like. Uh, second to like Masako and Vegeta having like you know the most amount of subscribers on the team and then the project just whoosh overtook me by a landslide like we were nearly at like we were god I, I can't even remember numbers are dumb but yeah they, they surged up and it felt crazy uh and eventually we uh yeah, eventually I would end up dropping out of college that year because I realized that the major I was going for, uh, th- there were two that I was uh, potentially going for, and that would be film and theater. And looking at it, there isn't really a market for people with that degree unless you are wanting to teach it. So I decided that it would probably be in my best interest just to enter the private sector and forget about college because it really wasn't doing me much good at all except for keeping me somewhere away from the job market, which was awful at the time. Uh, So I I left, I got a job working at a movie theater, actually. I think I'd already had that job, but whatever. I I worked at a movie theater for a while and then all in my spare time I would work on the Team Four Star stuff and my own personal stuff, which uh, I was I was starting to think about, you know, how to monetize my videos. And this was when I kind of came into the uh, what I call the reviewing phase of my online tenure, where I started producing these uh, uh, anime review shows in conglomeration with Blip TV and that guy with the glasses, now known as Channel Awesome. Uh, called Outside the Otaku, where I would review uh, anime series from the perspective of somebody that doesn't really watch anime and doesn't really, you know, care too much about whether it's anime or whether it's just a good show. You know, like, that that was my my, uh, perspective on the uh, review, and I don't think I did bad work on it. I, I Unfortunately, all of the videos have kind of disappeared into the ether, I, either because I have gotten rid of old hard drives that had it on there, and because Blip TV is now defunct, and that is the only place I'd really uploaded them. I have one episode on my YouTube, and that is the first one for uh, Berserk, I believe. If anybody has them, feel free to like link me, because uh, I know some people out there have like archives of strange things like I was able to get uh, the old TFS plays left for dead from somebody out there just by tweeting so if anybody has the archives of all those old outside the otaku episodes feel free to throw them to me I'd love to upload them for posterity's sake uh but yeah that that lasted a little bit until I realized that since my primary motivation for making them was to uh try to uh like basically make money as well as entertain the amount of hours that went into them compared to the amount of cash that flowed out of them was very poor because I would probably spend like 20 hours per episode and it would make me roughly a few hundred dollars. And that didn't really gel well with me for uh, how much effort I was putting in and how little free time that left me. Uh, Enter... TFS Gaming, uh, and the Let's Plays that we started doing. It, it started with the Left for Dead stuff, and eventually moved on to Halo Reach and Serious Sam, and eventually evolved into Two Saiyans Play with just Taka and myself when we opened the TFS Gaming YouTube channel. And that opened up a crazy amount of doors. Because, uh, for those of you that don't know, the TFS gaming side of things is where Team Four Star makes a majority of its cash and allows us to actually operate. Uh, in fact, that's where we earn probably 99% of our cash. We do sell t-shirts and stuff, but it's negligible compared to the Let's Play stuff. We, uh, decided to do that because it allowed us to, A, have fun as friends... B, it allowed me to play video games, which in my free time, I have very limited time for these days. And it's something that I've always loved doing. 
And C, it provided a steady stream of income that allowed me to quit my job in Minnesota, move down to Texas, and actually open up an office down here where we now record everything. Uh, when we moved to Texas, that's when Kieran joined in and eventually Grant joined on. And now I'm just in such a lucky position to work with so many amazing, talented, intelligent people. And just looking back from where I was 10 years ago today to where I am now, married to the love of my life, living in a very nice community, working with people who I would consider my best friends, if not, you know, non-blood family. It means the world to me. And I want to thank all of you out there who have been with me through all of this. And there's more I want to do with this channel. I want to... I want to try to make a difference. I want to... I want to help. I want, I want to entertain. But I also want to... I mean, I don't want to sound cocky or egotistical when I say this, but I... I want to try to inspire people, to, to improve, to, to realize that even when you're in a really dark position like I was 10 years ago that there's always something for you. There's always more and there's always more that you can become. There's always more that you can do. There's always more that you can learn. I think that's really what I want to make this channel about. I think that's what I'm going to do. So thank you all for being with me for these 10 years. Here's to many more. Peace, guys.